Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, telling you about the thing, ins and outs of what's happening in the state of Montana, Missoula, Montana, and beyond as we jump right into my morning show, talking about some events and talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend, but let's kick things off. But before I get into top stories today, I also wanted to mention that Keo, uh, Keoyo Pow Wow returns to the university for the 54th year. Uh, they take some time off, of course, because of the pandemic. Uh, today and tomorrow at the Adam Center, uh, uh, they will host the powwow bringing in tribes from Montana and more to celebrate American Indian heritage for one of the nation's oldest student-run powwows. Events are Friday and Saturday starting at 7 p.m. Uh, Friday the 21st and the longer day is on Saturday from noon to 7. It's going to be the Adam Center Fieldhouse. Expect dancing, drum circles, and plenty of culture in this very popular event in Missoula. All right, so let's jump right into some events. I mean, some news that is happening in, this, uh, in and around the world. Sudan, it, there's a big major conflict going on right now. And uh, so far, there's been a lot of fighting between a uh, military and a paramilitary group. Essentially, you have two guys who are allies at one point in the military when they were when Sudan was more unified, still kind of uh, dealing with some uh, tribalism going on between the two countries. But you had two military leaders who were on the same page. But as soon as power started to become a little bit more waning, they took the opportunity to go into the uh, capital of uh, Sudan uh, to. Uh, to basically take over the country. And so the clashes are in part with the struggles between General Abel Fatah Berna and the commander of the armed forces, General Mohammed Ahmed Dejala, Jajalo, the head of the Rapid Support Forces Group. The two generals are former allies jointly orchestrated an October 2021 military coup that derailed Sudan's short-lived transition to democracy. I mean, it's kind of like the U.S. Army decided to take the uh, take on the National Guard. Very similar, but with a very differing values. Uh, Khartoum, the city, uh, the capital city of Sudan, has seen heavy fire going on the last weekend, with only three hours of ceasefire humanitarian aid to support the time out. But the ceasefire was short-lived, and they are in the capital city fighting for control over the country and the future of the African countries. So that's a lot of stuff happening um, in Sudan as well. Um, one of the major uh, solutions, what they did in the past to deal with a lot of the infighting between the tribes, was they split up Sudan to North and South Sudan. That didn't really work out as much, but it, for the last uh, 10 years or so, from 2010, 2011, there was some uh, semblance of peace and an understanding couple of uh, unifying leaders, which had a lot of power, but there isn't a systems in place to uh, uh, forward that to the next generations of power. And that's some of the issues with having a, uh, a single person who has so much power. So as we move forward, we're talking about some more things. And Fox News, uh, a big, huge powerhouse corporation, uh, had to pay the piper to uh, Dominion uh, voting systems uh, at a total of 70 and $787 million. This was a billion-dollar lawsuit that was filed after the uh, 2020 election when Fox News claimed that the election was stolen and then Dominion um, was blamed for their uh, voting machines, and then through that, uh, uh, they continued to do uh, a litigation and defamation lawsuit, which is uh, the 787, even though it was settled out of court, would be known as the largest um, defamation uh, payment uh, in history, essentially. Um, Smartmatic is another company like Dominion who is also suing Fox News for spreading election lies in their company that are in charge of voting systems in place and were targeted by Fox News as one of their alleged reasons, alleged reasons why Trump lost the election. So, so far, uh, Fox News may have another issue on the horizon, but they are able to walk a fine uh, tightrope of re uh, right-leaning news without losing the mega base. Uh, that still watches. So over the weekend, Montana made a national news with their ban on TikTok uh, for uh, slated for January 2024, among other uh, radical legislation. The TikTok ban has uh, been a long and ongoing thing in the U.S. Congress with critics of China. Steve Daines mentioning my favorite quote as him describing the Chinese spy balloon as clowns could have dealt with this better than you have folks. And in a, in a, in a, in a comment against the Biden uh, uh, response to a couple of months ago. So Montana is known to be very proud of keeping privacy and avoiding any kind of outside interference. 
capitalism or government intrusion. Hence, our Constitution is the concept of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, with the addition of dignity, which uh, encompasses the ideas of privacy. So, jokes aside, this ban would uh, penalize folks in Montana for using the TikTok app by a $10,000 fine. A fair court challenge of TikTok is expected well before then, likely teeing up a legal ball, a brawl that supporters of the law in Montana say could eventually wind up in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. So, that's kind of what's happening there. And the other critics of the bill include the ACLU, which also have called the move to vi uh, a violation of free speech rights that would set an alarming precedent for an extent excessive government control over how Montanans use the internet. So, so perhaps letting people decide if they want the Chinese app downloaded on their devices or not, rather than make it illegal or more punishable than getting a DUI in our state, which ain't much since I keep hearing about DUIs. So moving on, um, zoning reform um, in terms of what's happening um, in terms of the many bills that the Montana State Legislature, and this has a lot to do with those kind of buildings in which they're going to be building really uh, large structures, apartment complexes to help combat affordable housing. So part of this is the highlighted bills, uh, Senate bills 382, 323, and 345 as important proposals for addressing this. Uh, KTVH reports that bills will aim at fully overhaul cities, land use planning processes by creating a five points to pull from city planning, duplexes for city slash towns for greater or equal to 5,000 people, mega uh, megaplex buildings for a uh, population of towns more than 7,000. Housing is becoming more and more scarce in large towns like Missoula that have a great uh, recreation to a livable community. However, unlike cities like Denver, Mon Missoula tends to skew towards lower wages compared to cities that have better opportunities. So far, these bills are meant to boost supply and curb demand in the long run. Another big bill in, the, in Montana will change the way we hold elections. The Senate Bill 566, which just in recent terms, this uh, was a uh, the concept of ranked choice voting. Uh, this, of course, was tabled just recently. John Tester, U.S. Senator Montana, spoke against this, saying this would create a jungle primary to which uh, national influences are getting uh, getting to the state rep. And so far, the bill was tabled and it means this election will happen like it always does with the primary. This whole Senate bill, I've been talking about it a little bit. Um, it was basically supposed to uh, take away primary voting, let the independent uh, uh, get the kind of uh, voting. But also, at the same time, some of the critiques of this would be like, whoever has the most money can essentially buy the election. So there was, that was one of the many critiques of this as well. Another bill is House Bill 971, says that the Montana Par Department of Environmental Quality may not consider greenhouse gas emissions and their related impacts when conducting environmental reviews to four permits. So the idea is that greenhouse gases have always kind of been a, uh, one of those things is where you can't really see it and you can't really taste it. Um, I'm not speaking on a science perspective, but it's just like if you, you know, like, you know, like you, you see toxic waste that are going into the river, but with greenhouse gases, you see a couple uh, exhausts coming from a car, it goes up in the air and it kind of go, turns invisible. So that's, so that's basically what this uh, essential uh, bill in Montana is going to say is that like, oh, greenhouse gases ain't a big deal. And so that's what they wanted to uh, do part of this one. So Constitution's right to a clean and healthy environment. The bill also sets up a contingency where most DEQ permits, which include air, water, oil and gas mining, will no longer go through environmental review under the Montana Environmental Pre Policy Act if the Montana Supreme Court makes such a ruling. So it would take power away from the courts in Montana and could open up a Pandora's box of permitting hell, which could clear out, could take out the right to clean and uh, health environment to not include greenhouse gases under that umbrella. So this bill is on the House floor and we'll see how this bill is handled in the legislature. Uh, more on legislation, uh, they're on, uh, they're pretty much towards the last two weeks of, of meeting up and everything like that. This is the uh, 38th year uh, the American Rivers have issued a report. And so far, the Clark Fork River has ranked a 5 out of 10 of the worst conditioned rivers and the culprit Smurfit Stone closure of 2010. So, <coughs> so we're kind of getting to the envir environmental qualities and all stuff like that, EPA. Uh, they used to go down to uh, the Smurfit Stone, meet with the residents of Frenchtown. MCAT would film it. Um, they would do regular testing. And then uh, the American Rivers called the EPA to direct, uh, to direct International Paper and West Rock to clean up this mess uh, west of Missoula. With things being on the back burner for some time now, EPA will conduct more sampling and determine the cleanup by 2028 to uh, project manager Ali Archer with the EPA and according to uh, her estimates. So, so there's a lot of uh, things going on in the in and around Missoula and beyond. So uh, 
there's uh, uh, you can check out more information. I, I get some information from uh, local news stations. Um, also, uh, Brazil Current is a good source as well. And then, of course, for your bigger news, AP News and whatnot. So <coughs> without further ado, here is a nice tease of our uh, uh, of our summer camps and our dance party that we host every Saturday. Um, yeah, our summer camps are almost full, so it's uh, it's it's a good time to start uh, thinking about your summer camp plans for your kids. So, without further ado, here is some videos, and when I come back, we're gonna talk about some movies. <laughs> You're a fool. Thought you could fool me. Yes! Aha! I agree! You've never been on track before.
it's time for summer in Montana. And why wait when MCAT is offering summer kids programs for the months of July and August? For three weeks, we will bring back our stop animation camps for kids getting used to production video editing, followed by our horror camp for more advanced filmmakers. But that's not all. I wonder how long he's going to keep us waiting. Yeah, he just keeps staring out that window. Through these camps, kids will learn how to create stories and bring them to life and make lasting friendships along the way. Let's go! Log on to MCAT.org to sign up or call us at 542-MCAT. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's jump right into some um, movies that are coming up this week. And it's time for Pre-Critic, where I pre-judge a movie based on uh, my pre... Um, Condition notions of movies. So here's a movie that's coming out. It's called Evil Dead Rise. It's like Critters 4. This one takes place in an apartment complex, minus Leonardo, Di Leonardo, Di Leonardo DiCaprio, not the guy from uh, Ninja Turtles. But anyways, watch a series of that kind of was there for Sam Raimi to get into the comic book movies, and the IP is more popular among niche fans. Enjoy a possessed mama as she attacks her friends and family like a rapid dog, um, only to be magically chainsawed to beat the evil, because if you've seen an Evil Dead movie, you can expect there's gonna be a chainsaw and a lot of blood. Uh, forget about it. Scary, kind of funny, very bloody is the best way to describe these kind of films. Then we got Bo is Afraid. You like Hereditary and Mid Samar? Uh, the director is back, Ari Aster, with an adult man in a perilous journey through his mind and Nathan Lane. Uh, I like show tunes, but not forever. Anyways, this movie is more about the director trying to pull another deep movie about a broken character coming into their own wall, at the same time dealing with the pitfalls of family relations and the intense film with Joker star Joaquin Phoenix. Trying to do more. Uh, do, trying to do uh, a movie with Sesame Street type worlds with a don't touch me I'm scared kind of model if you know that reference then yes you uh, are somebody who watches Adult Swim in the United Kingdoms um, we got Guy Ritchie's The Covenant uh, not to be confused with all the other movies that's called The Covenant this is particularly Guy Ritchie's and if you know Guy Ritchie Guy Ritchie's the kind of name you'd be like oh this is the guy who did like uh, National Treasure and there's kind of movies where there's a bunch of cool cars bang bang shoot em up kind of things anyways um, Nicolas Cage is not in this movie this is the one with Jake Gyllenhaal uh, it's about the military guy and his former terrorist interpreter on their journey to bring peace into the Middle East while at the same time exposing the hypocrisies of society however if it is a US military movie it will slowly go towards propaganda but there's nothing wrong with liking one's own country if we're especially for winning um, Let's talk about some video games. <clears throat> Dead Island 2 is out today from the series of hack and slash zombie games comes an uh, uh, updated game with Unreal Engine 5, which basically they went from three, four, and five in the last 10 years, and they come out and be like, all right, we're gonna release the game. It was like, oh, pff, better graphics? All right, we're gonna go back to committee and start over again. So anyways, this game has been on delayed for so long that most people old enough to play this mature game were born the time the first one even came out, so they're old enough to play these kind of games. So, M for mature. Then we got one that's rated kind of E for everyone. Enjoy your. Do you like Minecraft, or do your kids obsess about Minecraft? Hey, it, it, if you're a guy around uh, roughly my age, maybe a little bit older, and you know you played StarCraft uh, and all that kind of gaming, well, Minecraft is jumping in on that because you know craft, 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 craft. Then you have your basically kind of top-down world where you're running around and basically, uh, uh, basically telling an army to take over different lands in the mine. But with a Minecraft kind of shell, so Minecraft, just buy Minecraft. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You must you must consume Minecraft. Uh, up next, we have a uh, dub and stuff for you guys from the 1951 movie Hunt the Man Down. So when I come back, we're going to talk about some city council. All right, prisoner 4546, she's over there. Be on your best behavior, no touching. And another thing, uh, forget about it. It's not important. Uh, hey, um... Uh, hey, uh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's, um, oh, this is kind of embarrassing. Hey, um, yeah. Oh, I'm doing just fine. How are you surviving in here? Well, they have, uh, two channels and no sports. Oh, that was kind of a deep cut. Uh, how are you surviving anyways? Oh, uh, you know, library, books. Oh, ooh, I didn't know you could read. You learn something new every day. I'm really sorry I called the police on you. Oh, it was only the TV remote. Yeah, but still, I escalated things quite a bit far for, uh, you know, I didn't really call dibs on the remote. 
And, you know, I probably should have. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, I should have been entitled to the remote. Can we just drop this whole thing? Because I just want to go home. Uh, yes, of course, of course. I'll go tell the warden that it was just a misunderstanding and you can let me let out, okay? Oh, that's great. That's one. Why do you keep looking at me like that? It's not a, it's not a big deal. Just tell the warden that, you know, tell the right people, the parole board, who... Uh, Wait, sorry, I'm interrupting something. Um, are you ready to go? Oh, yeah, this must be Dylan. You were telling me all about him. Oh, wait, 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 hold on a second. Who, who, who's this guy? Um, well, he's just, uh... All right, don't worry about it, sir. I am a door-to-door -door salesman selling your wife a vacuum. And she was like, hey, my husband's in jail. And I said, well, can I come with you? Maybe I could... Well, listen, this on. isn't really a good time. Now, you haven't had a vacuum cleaner quite like uh, this. It is by okay. far the best. If I had this vacuum... I'd be able to clean up faster when we spend more time together. You just want more screen time, don't you? You just want to be watching whatever you want, forever how long you want. Can't you just turn on the radio? Oh, you should know that I have a terrible imagination. I can't just listen to things. I'm going to have to stop you right there. Who do you think you are? Just waltzing right in here with some kind of salesman telling me to sell his vacuum and whatnot. Maybe there's a TV on the vacuum. And you, you're invited. Get out of my face. Well, I tried my best. Good day to you, sir. Later, ma'am. Call me if you change your mind. Excuse me. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council stuff. It's time for city council kicking things off. Um, we're talking about a fairly heavy topic going into this. It is a proclamation of Sexual Assault Action Month. And so Barb Jenkins uh, with the organization Jane Doe No More talks about uh, being a sexual assault survivor and what, the, uh, what this means for the community. I've been told by a former state senator that sexual assault victims are not the experts. I beg to differ. We are the ones who have had to live with what others have done to us against our will, some of us at a very young age. I myself have had 48 years of experience living with the stigma. At the age of 56, I think that qualifies me as an expert on the subject. However, that said, I have had extensive experience and training from organizations such as YWCA, the Lifeguard Group, the National Credentialing Program, the State of Montana Victim Impact Panel, EVAWI, many training seminars that I have attended and helped facilitate across the state, SAKI, national podcasts, research and studies, a clerk of court conference, major conferences that I have spoken at as well as universities that I have spoken at on the subject matter. I am a RAIN speaker and an author, but in all truthfulness, none of that stuff matters to me as much as for all of you to realize that Jane Dona Moore is a valid resource right here in your midst that should be tapped into. Okay, and so Jane No More uh, org is an organization that brings a lot of uh, sexual assault survivors together, tell their stories, and hopefully get, give them the justice that they deserve. Another topic that's coming back is the Riverfront Trail subdivision, which I won't talk too much about, but this is for approval of the rezoning. Crappy, crassy, uh, Cassie Trippard, um, community plan for the city of Missoula, talks about this particular subdivision in the uh, lower Miller Creek, and they talked a little bit more about that roundabout. Um, so here we go. Shown here is the approved preliminary plat. You can see that the roundabout at the intersection of Lower Miller Creek Road and Old Bitterroot Road was planned to be located partially on the Riverfront Trail subdivision property and largely on adjacent property. This would have required obtaining more right of way from adjacent properties. Also note here that Drago Lane is curved. There was a pedestrian easement proposed on lot two as well. Okay, so uh, as they go into more detail about this particular topic, you know, the, the roundabout that's going to be established right here, essentially, they're what, you know, a lot of times what they do with the roundabout is that they, um, they uh, kind of like widen the road to a certain degree on both sides. And in this case, what they're trying to do is they're trying to push out the road a little bit further to uh, 
uh, to put the uh, roundabout in there, which, you know, it's not like the biggest topic, but it's something they've been working on back and forth on exactly how much they're going to be putting in pay for this. And then from the p picture, they are moving closer towards the development rather than leaving it, uh, leaning too much on the widening of the road on either side. Uh, like making a hump on the road to make it more room for the roundabout. This is kind of like a, uh, uh, to kind of get the ball rolling on this development they've been talking about in this area for some time now. So needless to say, this was kind of like a last bit they spoke on on this and they were able to move forward with this uh, development as promised. So um, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to unpack with the legislation set, um, update. So Jessica Miller with the Office of the Mayor talks a little bit uh, more about all the uh, bills that uh, are passed, are passing, and just uh, the overall Montana State Legislature. Now we have SB 523, which is generally revised tax increment financing laws. That hearing is tomorrow morning. Mayor Hess and Councilwoman Jones are heading over for that one, um, along with uh, a lot of other folks, I imagine. So that one, um, had, would have big implications for our uh, for the Missoula Redevelopment Agency if it were to pass. House Bill 774, which is generally revised election laws, uh, that would be changing all of our elections to even numbered years. That one has a hearing this coming Wednesday. Um, House Bill 925 is revising laws related to tax increment um, pledged to payment of bonds. That bill was amended um, and then passed out of committee and is heading to the floor for a floor vote. So um, I believe that those amendments made it not quite as bad for us, but um, it's still one that we would prefer not to pass. Um, House Bill 481 uh, increased the rate of inflation limit for calculating of property tax levies. That is the one that would have removed um, the cap from half the rate of inflation and raised it up to the rate of inflation. That one was tabled in committee. Senate Bill 381 requiring one council member per ward of first class cities. That one did fail second reading today on the floor. So that one died on the floor today. Um, House Bill 731 is generally revised landlord tenant law and I believe that was one of the the bad la landlord tenant bills that we were following and that one also failed second reading today and then um, we have uh, Senate Bill 382 which is create the Montana Land Use Planning Act um, that is the big um, land use planning bill rewrite uh, that contains everything um, that is going through and that one has been amended and is being returned to the Senate. So that should be um, the final step of that process is for the Senate to look at the amendments made in the House and um, hopefully concur and move forward with that one. Okay, and just to give an update on the uh, the TIF funding, um, this is part of Senate Bill uh, Two, uh, uh, I mean Five uh, Twenty Three, introduced by Senator Greg Hertz of Polson, who also introduced the uh, the uh, the bill that would. Uh, overtly uh, change how we do the elections, which was tabled. And so here's a story that was written by David Erickson. I'm just looking at it on my phone right now. And, you know, this was basically from Monday's meeting, kind of give an update, but this is more of an update on TIF. And so, you know, TIF, dozens of business leaders, taxpayers, elected officials from around Montana came to address their support for, uh, for or concerns with the bill for a total of 82 different commentators. And so this is a firestorm of record breaking amount of testimony. And so part of this was the uh, like a city council to approve all expenditures of TIF. There are many provisions in the bill that would uh, overhaul the system that used many cities and towns in Montana to incentivize development in certain areas. This bill would prohibit the adoption of TIF provisions in the incremental taxable value of all urban renewal areas to have adoption of TIF provisions exceed 7% of the total taxable value of the taxing jurisdiction. So, you know, it's it's basically kind of putting the reins on it, essentially. But at the same time, TIF is one of the few things that the city can do to entice uh, development to actually happen in our town and then use some of that funding to uh, help build and improve uh, it, um, sidewalks, mitigate blight and that kind of stuff. You know, it was a tool that was kind of made, but then kind of uh, twisted in a way that Missoula, you have used it very strategically to improve the community in many different ways. And um, yeah, and I mean, I'm not, yeah, I, I'm more pro TIF, and there's a lot of people out there who are anti TIF, and I understand that um, there is some issues when it comes to uh, basically um, like taking the tax burden a little bit further away from developers as they're developing their process. So I can understand why a lot of people are concerned about that. So um, 
Of course, today would be officially the 80th day in session, meaning that there's another two weeks until they wrap on their 90 day session of the 68th Montana legislature. So this will be the uh, this will uh, be the end of it. And then we'll have another two years, another then we'll have the next session. Um, and then, you know, Montana is one of only like five states that has like a biannual um, um, legislation like Texas. I mean, even Wyoming has it every single year, so it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it. But anyways, um, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the housing redevelopment and community programs in committee meetings. C city council meeting was roughly an hour long, so with housing redevelopment, they looked into the funding using the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, Home Investment Partnership Program, Home uh, American Rescue uh, Act, and the Community Development Block Grant funds to certain organizations and so this is like uh, one of the many things in which the city has a presentation they have a bunch of grants money that they're working on and they're looking at some of the things that they want to be funding to help bolster our affordable housing stock so colleen with the presentation talks about the land trust and upcoming projects being funded by that money and this is what she had to say the projects that were recommended for funding are going to be coming out of the affordable housing trust fund Two of the projects come from the North Missoula Community Development Corporation. The first project that is recommended for funding is the Taylor Property Acquisition Project. And this project will support the purchase of land under 14 homes in Missoula's River Road neighborhood. The properties will be converted to a hybrid cooperative community land trust, ensuring permanent affordability. The land is situated on three parcels and the homes include six duplex homes, one five bedroom single family home, three two bedroom single family homes, one three bedroom single family home and three lots for mobile homes. The next project recommended for funding from NMCDC is the capacity building project. Um, this, these funds would support the salary and training of NMCDC's stewardship coordinator position to help manage their rapidly expanding community land trust program. In addition to having recently expanded its service area to work in all areas of Missoula, the community land trust program has grown to steward deed restricted homes they partner with Habitat for Humanity on infill projects, and alongside with NeighborWorks Montana, they created the first cooperative community land trust hybrid project in the state of Montana. Okay, so along with working a lot, with a lot of those organizations, they also work with an organization called Homeward, which is a funding mechanism meant to help uh, first-time home buyers, and they are looking to for for continue financial and home buying classes support for Missoulians. So uh, Karen with the presentation talks about what comes from these projects overall in, uh, in the long run. So this is what she had to say. Well, in all, these projects will have lasting positive outcomes for our community with the support of approximately 225 affordable units. This estimate does not include those who will eventually move into those units. And more than an estimated 1,200 people will be helped through the financial and homeownership education program and assistance available through the Housing Solutions Fund. Okay, so there's a, just a little bit of a future about how many people are going to be affected by this, uh, um, all these ante anticipated project outcomes. Not to mention, you know, uh, one of the major things that happened just recently was the uh, uh, opening of the uh, Trinity Navigation Center, and so that was a big move forward with that. So uh, this is just a series of affordable housing projects using federal funds and more as uh, they use some of the uh, funding for the uh, community land trust to help leverage more grants for more development, more affordable housing and land acquisitions. Um, so hundreds of thousands of dollars going towards programs to match with the city's budget. These are competitive grants and some of these uh, services Missoula's uh, have used for a long time, even long before the pandemic even affected a lot of the housing issues. So for more information on the topic, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. To watch most and more of these meetings, you can go to MCAT's YouTube channel, MCAT TV Missoula. Um, up next, we have a video posted just recently from a presentation of mycelia and not so much mushrooms as they create uh, in to uh, as they uh, as they. Uh, so basically, the, the title of this is uh, my core mediation how mushrooms digest toxic waste into possibilities and so this is one of the many programs that mcat uh, 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 publishes in in the city of missoula as well um, and this is a little tease of that and then when i come back we'll talk all about some events that are happening in the city of missoula stay with me well the way we do micro remediation we don't get mushrooms we're just working with the mycelia um just the, the mass of cells where we actually 
don't want mushrooms because they stop producing the right enzymes or they don't absorb the metals out of the water. So we don't worry about mushrooms at all. We actually need to harvest our cultures before they ever make a mushroom. Um, sometimes they've gone too far and then we have supper, but but as, <laughs> as far as, as uh, um, that, that's a fundamental difference here. Mushrooms are, are the fruiting body the, and it's the mycelia that we're working with that are the actually active growing enzyme producing part of the fungus. There are uh, a number of species of mushrooms that bioaccumulate heavy metals, and I'm sure Egan can go into this at more detail, but uh, species like the giant puffball, uh, the common champignon, the button mushroom, and uh, shaggy mane are all mushrooms that uh, tend to accumulate uh, heavy metals and concentrate them in the fruiting body. So if you're picking puffballs out by the mine tailings, you might have another thought. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um. Okay, so yeah, so those are some of the, uh, um, uh, that's an example of uh, many of the talks and lectures that are held here at the Missoula Public Library. There's always a bunch of stuff going on. You can go to missoulapubliclibrary.org for more of these kind of uh, uh, presentations and more. Just watch them live. And also MCAT has a tendency to uh, live stream a lot of our content. So you can follow us on our Facebook page and you can also see it on our website at MCAT.org. So let's talk about some uh, ev events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Let's kick things off. It's Mo Missoula events time. If you're interested in coming to the Missoula Public Library, there's a lot of events that always happen here every single Friday and it's story time in tiny tales for kids who are learning to read and they do this around 10 30 a.m. every single Friday so and then and then also they have yarns in watercolor which is a great uh, experience for people who want to get their hands dirty with some uh, stitching crocheting and also have the opportunity to uh, do some painting as well with their with the water class what watercolor class so uh, makerspace uh, museum public library has a makerspace and a makerspace is essentially a kind of a do-it-yourself uh, um, environment in which you could utilize the 3D printer, the laser scanner, uh, all sorts of engravers, and all sorts of fun things here at the public library where you can really get your hands dirty. So it's a lot of great stuff uh, that the uh, library provides for uh, uh, folks as well. I'll talk a little bit more about the library, but we're going to jump back to the Missoula Food Bank, which is open uh, most days from uh, 10 a.m. to about 1 p.m., with some exceptions for Tuesdays and Thursdays until 7 p.m. And so it is a uh, is a food bank, so it offers uh, food for people who are a little bit tight on money, and it's a great opportunity. To, uh, it's uh, also a part partly in partnership with the Missoula Public Library, so they have a mini library, essentially with a community gathering space and also a great cooking uh, kitchen up on their uh, community rooms. So it's a great opportunity for people to get aboard with that. If you're interested in staying indoors today because it is snowing uh, currently at this particular time as I'm looking outside. Um, you guys can have some indoor fun. Mismo Gymnastics Roots Acre Sports Center and also YMCA of Missoula are having indoor recreational fun for a lot of the families and more. Um, and that starts uh, roughly around 10.30 to about 11.45. And so it's essentially kind of like that big two-hour two hour block for people who want to stay inside but still be active. Uh, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. This is a, a continuation of their uh, regular meetups where you can uh, go to the Missoula Senior Center, hang out, have a nice meal. They stopped doing this because of the pandemic, but now they're starting to get back into the swing of things. So um, let's see, what else is there? Um, you got some hands-on science from the Spectrum Discovery Center. So uh, Spectrum Discovery Center is roughly open from 11 a.m. to about 5 p.m. Uh, Tuesdays through Saturdays here at the Missoula Public Library on the second floor. And they're gonna be talking about biology in their special presentation. Lego Club is also happening on the second floor at 2.30 p.m. Uh, this afternoon. Um, we, this is the Create Art Bar is hosting a craft and sip all day starting at 3 p.m. Uh, Master Your Range, is, they're doing a golf clinic for range physical therapy and wellness, and this is starting at 3 p.m. at the heart of Missoula. Uh, Earth Day Trail Cleanup, so the Waterworks and Blue Mountain is hosting a special Earth Day Trail Cleanup. You can meet up at uh, Blue Mountain or Waterworks Hill, and you can uh, head up there and start cleaning up some of the uh, trash that's on the trails. Uh, Youth Adult Writers uh, Group is the Missoula Public Library at 3.30 p.m. It is also online for people who want to do a virtual uh, as well so this is to help improve uh, teens uh, youth uh, writers and the future of writing um, the resort at pause up summer job fair series so if you like pause up ranch and you want to get in, involved with them either delivering food or doing all sorts of things on their ranch 
They're doing a job fair series at this Paws Up Ranch starting at 4 p.m. this afternoon. Um, community night and a cornhole tournament at Imagination Brewing Company starting at 5. Um, Mocktail Mixology Lifelong Learning Center doing some class uh, classes for mixing drinks and stuff. So maybe you want to get that uh, uh, get the uh, the bar training essentially. So um, Imagination Brewing Company is also hosting folk music Eddie Roy some folk. Um, starting at 6 p.m. Blue Shadow at the Highlander Beer is going to be playing some blues music at Highlander Beer. Um, the mid, uh, the Might Travis Live at Tin Spoon Winery is going to be at 6 p.m. It's going to be miscellaneous jam band kind of music. Cheap Date Night is going to be at the Missoula Public Library, and Cheap Date Night is usually a great chance for people to uh, enjoy a film presented by the Missoula Public Library. And today's and tonight's film, starting at 6.30 p.m., is going to be Ticket to Paradise, um, a romantic comedy starring George Clooney and Julia Roberts as a divorced couple um, who team up to sabotage the impending wedding of their kid. So that should be fun, but of course it's George Clooney and, um, you know, Julia Roberts. So, And it's usually free. It's a cheap date night, so the library hosts these kind of things they do on a lot of Fridays, so you guys can check that out. It's kind of like after hours at the library. It's pretty cool. Um, Let's see what else is there. Sunflowers on Purple Paint Night. Painting with a Twist is doing a, they do a bunch of uh, art and painting classes. It, uh, they have, The Furnace is going to play in some film. It's going to be experimental art, uh, art travaganza. So it's, uh, it's going to be at The Furnace. And so this is uh, a lot of different things here as well. KFGM Community Radio is going to be hosting this. And this is starting uh, at 7 p.m. It's a $10 entry fee. Wow, it looks like they got a lot of stuff going on tonight for sure. Uh, karaoke at the Jack Saloon. You got Replay, which is the West Side Theater. I talked about this a little bit last week. And Replay is showing the best of the plays and the dance and the contemporary dances that they've done at the West Side Theater. And they're doing it this weekend as well, starting Friday at 8 p.m. tonight. So Louis Bon Du at the Old Post is going to be playing some acoustic music at the Old Post starting at 8 p.m. DC Chefs Live is at Monks. It's going to be some DJ electronic music for those of you who want to go out and do some clubbing. Um, Union Club is going to do some rock and multi-genre, so it's going to be somewhat of a fun jam band. Union Club usually has a lot of live bands where you can dance to. Um, and those are pretty much it for your uh, Friday events as we uh, jump right into your Saturday. As we're transitioning more into your farmer's market kind of deal, uh, we still have a couple of those winter markets. And of course, you know, it's snowing, so why not keep it winter? So. Um, the uh, Southgate Mall has the winter market from 9 to about 1 p.m. They also have the uh, Orchard Homes market as well off of uh, 3rd Street, uh, just off of Reserve. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Um, that's basically your morning stuff. Uh, there's the Run for Trees is going to be at Silver Park starting at 10 a.m. It's a nice fun run. There's always a bunch of run and sports activities happening as we're getting a little bit warmer outside. But it's not too warm, so you don't get heat stroke. Um, outstanding Credit Financial Literary Series series. Clearwater Credit Union is doing at their training center. They're doing classes starting at 10 a.m. and just understanding how you can build and better utilize your credits. Special Earth Day Story Time. Missoula Public Library is also uh, in conjunction with Earth Day is hosting a bunch of events here at the Missoula Public Library which involve Earth Day. MCAT will have our own special event happening here along with many of the other partners under one roof. This is one of our many quarterly obligations to provide a group together um, uh, event talking about Earth Day and it also happens to be MCAT's 33rd birthday so help us celebrate on that day as well. So. Fix-It Clinic Missoula, um, Home Resource is hosting a Fix-It Clinic starting at 11 a.m. So 11 a.m. is a great opportunity for to bring in whatever you want to get fixed. It's usually a lawn garden kind of stuff at the Home Resource. Uh, and it's going to start at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Earth Day Celebration at MUD is also going to be Missoula uh, Urban Demonstration is going to be doing their own celebration at the uh, right next to Home Resource, which is MUD. Uh, so they're doing their 17th annual Earth Day Celebration at the MUD site on uh, from 12 to 4. The Earth Day Celebration will honor the Showcase Montana's vibrant, sustainable community. The festival will include environmental expo activities and workshops for children, adults, and educating programs, as well as food, drinks, and local music. So you can find more information going to mudproject.org. All right, so um, MCAT, like always, we're going to be hosting our Saturday drop-in, as always, from 1 to 3. We'll have a little twist on Earth Day as well, so you guys can check that out. Um, uh, let's see. What else is there? Uh, Milltown State Park, Earth Day hike and tree planting. So Milltown State Park is going to be uh, hosting a tree planting. So if you want to plant a tree for Earth Day, you can go to Milltown State Park starting at 1 p.m. 
Surf Preservation Award and Tour, starting at uh, 1 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. They're doing a Preservation Award and Tour. And so this one, just a little bit more background as they look into it, is a uh, proud to announce their outstanding historic preservation. The, the ceremony will start at 1 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library in the fourth floor Cooper Room A. Light refreshments will be served. Um, so at approximately 2.30 p.m. they'll meet for a tour at the nearby Radio Central building to be followed by a tour of the two buildings which will undergo future restoration. The Hammond Arcade and the old J.C. Penney building. The tour will last approximately two hours and not all be ADA accessible. So they're using a lot of the old buildings of, of, of Missoula. So look out for that as well. So let's see. Oh, and while all this is happening, we got the International Wildlife Film Festival. How can I forget all about that? The International Wildlife Film Festival is kicking off and it's going to be hosted uh, primarily at the, uh, the Roxy Theater. So if, for more information, this is going to be their 46th annual International Wildlife Film Festival. So it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be insane. Um, and so they're going to be showing all sorts of short movies and short, all, all sorts of things as well. Um, yeah, and you can find out more information by going to the uh, Roxy's website at theroxytheater.org. All right, so yeah, they've got a lot of stuff going on here. You know, Living in the Wild, Nazambi Mati, uh, Sagebrush Gold, Living with Snow Leopards. Um, yeah, all sorts of things like that. And then, of course, you know, uh, Makerspace is doing a special event called uh, The Nature of Currency, Middle Casting, Do It Yourself Middle Casting. A Buffalo Running Paint Class at Painting with a Twist. A hands-on science biology as continuing at the Spectrum Discovery Center. Um, let's see, more international wildlife film festivals. Definitely a lot of movies coming out this Saturday. Um, I didn't see anything about the Wild Walk if they're going to be doing it. So they usually do it to kind of lead up into it, and I think they might do it on Saturday. So look out for that. And, and most uh, most parades in Missoula happen around 10 a.m. anyway. So. Uh, there's definitely a lot going on to justify a nice visit to downtown Missoula on Saturday starting at 10 a.m. just to kind of see all the other things that are happening in and around, not just at the library. So um, more events happening tonight is dueling pianos uh, at the Staven Hoop. It's going to be multi-genre starting at 8 p.m. Uh, Saturday night. Karaoke at Westside Lanes on Saturday night starting at 9 p.m. Earth Day with uh, a Pit of Foggers and the new old furniture, rock music at Monk's Bar starting at 9 p.m. Much like Charlie is going to be at Union Club. And then Chris Moon is going to wrap things up for your Saturday at the Badlander starting at 10 p.m. for some DJ music. So there's other events that are happening in and around uh, the city of Missoula this weekend. Um, there's a, always a couple other things happening. Sunday seem to be a couple bird watching. So if you're interested in that, Montana Natural History Center is doing a MNHC's Bird Watching Club for April. So you can check that out. Uh, a couple other game day type stuff information going on there for your Sunday. But as, as far as I'm concerned, I'm as I'm as done uh, I'm as done as uh, uh, as uh, something something as a, a nice soliloquy. Anyways, <laughs> I'll thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good weekend, folks.